Are we on? Uh, there is foil. Uh, the not ever to be on merchandise uh, catchphrase, which is uh, fast sweeping across the deserted playgrounds of the nation. Uh, good evening uh, and welcome to this uh, St George's Day uh, live stream. Uh, apologies for the um, last minute rearrangement, that was a bad call on my part. Uh, but what it did do is enabled me to take a few more videos um, and uh, get a bit more prepared. Um, so hopefully it'll be a little bit of a better theme because of it. So uh, thank you all for, for tuning in um, and uh, for all of your support. Uh, I did manage to, to kind of get a mailing list of all the donors and everything uh, finally sorted out. And so uh, you should have got a, an email through one of those big mass marketing MailChimp uh, emails through today. If you didn't, uh, check your spam box because <laughs> it's probably there. Um, but yeah, just sort of saying thank you. Um, and talking about potentially uh, having a, a Q and A session next week. Uh, so I had quite a few questions in from from some of the, the viewers and uh, donors and stuff like that. So um, and plus doing Q and A sessions is, is, is you know it's, it's a good thing to do. People get a lot of, uh, of benefit out of them. Uh, being able to to sort of see things um, explained maybe make some little videos and things like that. So we'll look at doing one next week so people can just kind of like, if anybody has any preferences as to when it is, just send some emails in and uh, whoever gets, you know, whatever day and time gets the most votes will we'll kind of look to do that. Um, and that'll be just, you know, uh, for the donors only, I'll, manage to, I'll send out a, like a private link and stuff like that. So um, if you haven't donated then, sorry. Uh, but yeah, we are kind of like, uh, you know, we, we, we're ahead of the game now uh, in terms of donations. So thank you very much for, for all your support. Um, and there's a lot of people been asking whether or not these will continue going forward. And the answer is pretty much yes. Um, this was something that we we're always going to plan to do uh, in one form or another. Um, um, it's just all happened a bit quicker than, than we were expecting. So yeah, we'll probably gonna look at doing it. It might not be as regular, particularly once we get into the summer months um, because of um, there's not as much work to be doing uh, but there's lots of stuff we can talk about and so yeah we'll, we'll definitely be doing it um last time there was a, a flicker 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 on the on the webcam um which was coming from the on the pc feed uh and so what we have now is uh my iphone is connected to the computer and i'm using my iphone as a webcam and so there might be a little bit of stuttery effects on that uh, so if it's terrible, please say so in the chat and we can change back to the flickery webcam. Uh, we are waiting on some uh, on a little dongle, always waiting on a dongle uh, to come so that we can uh, turn my camera into a, into a webcam. So hopefully that should then improve the, 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 the picture quality a little bit uh, and take away the, the lag that we've got now because technology shit. Uh, right, so uh, that's pretty much kind of all that kind of stuff. Um, thank you very much, as I said, to, to everybody. Uh, but in particular, I just want to say thank you to, to Ian Young, Bonsai EJ out there, who has been kind of like instrumental in um, sort of kicking me up the arse, making me do this, doing, giving me ideas. Uh, he's uh, sat through a lot of kind of like test runs of, of this kind of stuff um, and given some very valuable feedback. Um, which has been much appreciated. So thank you very much, Ian, Bonsai Egypt. If you don't follow him on social media and things like that, then please do so. Um, he has revolutionised uh, the Irish bonsai scene, I would think it's fair to say, over the last few years. Um, so big up, Ian. Um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, uh, constructive criticism. That was one of the things I said in the email. Um, if anybody does have any constructive criticisms um, about the way these are going, uh, and things like that then please do uh, get in contact with us and say um, what works what you like what you don't like things like that and so I mean I don't watch these so I don't know <laughs> yeah. um, and so I don't know how good they are or not so you have to tell me right so looks good no flicker looks good okay no flicker here yeah good 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 let's hope no naked selfies <laughs> uh, you know that's not gonna happen uh, Dean I've, I've, I've turned my dongle pictures off uh, right, so yeah, tonight we're going to look at um, uh, candle pinching uh, on single flush pines. Uh, now, the term single flush pine uh, pretty much didn't exist uh, in, in 
kind of like British bonsai, Western bonsai world until Ryan Neal sort of came back and started talking about single flush and double flush pines. Uh, and since then, um, people have started to kind of like differentiate between the two. Um, and I mean, I always, I always knew you know, the difference between white, like in Japan, the difference between white pines, black pines, red pines, uh, white pines being the single flush pine. So a single flush pine is one which has, which is designed only, so, you know, it's evolved only to grow once a year, um, which is white pines do, Scots pines, uh, Mugos, Uncinata, okay, and all of their little variants in between. Okay, whereas the black pines and the red pines are designed to basically be able to grow twice a year. And so if you think back to the last stream in when we were talking about energy, okay, and there was a reason why I did that before coming on to, to, to pines and things like that. You know, black pines, red pines, they, they have enough energy in reserve to be able to, to send out two flushes of growth a year and not be stressed. Okay, so they, they are actively they know that there is a good possibility because their new growth is soft and tender uh, and can be ripped off by high winds and such like. Uh, and so they have evolved to make sure that they've got energy storage to be able to do that. Okay, the white, uh, the single flush pines, white pines, Scots pines, etc. They don't do that. They're only designed to grow once a year. Okay, to only have one flush of growth a year. In the past, some people have... Um, particularly with, say, uh, the, the Sylvestris, people have cut off new growth early in the season. Okay, so rather than, say, you know, sort of doing a candle cut similar to um, to a black pine in June and still manage to get away with getting a second flush of growth from adventitious buds. Okay, but that is only because Scots pines are, by their very nature, just super vigorous trees, and you can be quite aggressive with them. Uh, I know one uh, quite well-known bonsai enthusiast uh, in the Leeds area who, when he was very young, uh, he read in a book, take off all the old needles on Scots pine. Uh, and so he took off every single needle on a Scots pine, leaving only the buds. And the tree didn't die. OK, it had the buds somehow next year it pushed, grew and it was OK. OK, They're, that's how vigorous and, and to a certain extent bulletproof they are. Uh, but the best way to get out, you know, to, to get the best results from the single flush pines is to, to follow um, this type of the, the work that we're going to look at today. Okay, uh, and as I said, like this, this sort of does apply to, to all of those sort of single flush pines. There are slight differences between the, the varieties. Okay, and there are differences within the varieties themselves, so the, or the species themselves. So, for example, in, in one of the videos later, we'll look at um, we'll look at two different Scots pines. Okay, so there's one Spanish one, uh, and then there's this one, which is from the New Forest, uh, a British, a UK Scots pine. Uh, the, the genetic differences and the the growth habits of Scots pines across the world. Um, very very different and you could have two trees that were collected next to each other from the same mountain that have different growth habits okay this is due to genetic differences um, it is due to environmental differences as well and so but we can you, you can start to recognize um, growth habits from certain areas so for example the new forest pines they were trees that were originally designed to be uh, to be they were grown for timber, and so they were designed to be super strong, grow very vigorously, grow very upright, very strong. Uh, and so they have a certain growth habit. The ones which are collected from, say, the Spanish mountains or the French Alps, these areas, they are, they're different. Okay, They're designed for survival in harsh conditions. Okay, And so there are differences, slight differences, between all of these slight, slight different sub-varieties, but essentially the same idea uh, follows through um, and so there will be slight differences like for example within white pines we have a kokonoe here which is uh, one of the dwarf varieties okay um, I'm gonna have to bring this up because I can't use the camera okay so one of those dwarf varieties of white pine okay and things like kokonoe and zuisho have a tendency a habit to send out multiple buds from one point okay and so one aspect of the work will be a little bit more applicable to to those types of species and we'll look at that a little bit later 
um, but the, the same sort of candle pinching and um, uh, just had a message from somebody in Leeds um, <laughs> uh, the same sort of candle pinching techniques and the idea of energy management is the same across all of those little sub varieties there will just be nuanced differences okay so one of the things that um, we want to just sort of uh, kind of like just cover before we go into to, into the actual kind of mechanics of, of candle pinching and things like that is just to kind of recap on what we were talking about um, in the last stream which was about energy okay and so if you haven't seen that stream go and watch it so if you're watching this on 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 iPlayer on the catch up then go and watch that first okay and what we talked about there was that all that we're doing with bonsai is the generation and redistribution of energy in order to achieve an aesthetic pleasing form okay and so that is one of our big kind of like fundamental keystones uh, for, 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 for working on uh, on pines okay we're able to very very specifically redistribute the energy within a pine in such a way as to get our desired result okay what is our desired result okay and so I made a little kind of uh, little quick video here okay about what we're kind of aiming for in terms of branching structure and why okay so when we're looking at creating an idealized branch structure what we need to do is imagine this is our primary branch okay with some movement in it this can be both left and right and up and down and then from that branch we have secondary branches which all come out from the outsides of curves along the line now ideally the separation needs to be very very similar and then from those secondary branches it then splits off into tertiary branches and so on and so forth okay and as the build as it builds up ramification it creates this idealized branching structure which is very very good for long-term cultivation of trees and you'll find that out as you go along with your bonsai practice okay and then as foliage begins to develop we can get lovely uh, foliage pads of nice even density Okay, I draw that kind of diagram uh, a lot in workshops and things like that. And that idealized branching structure, it may seem quite um, sort of theoretical. It might seem quite mathematical. And if we watch the next video, watch it, it definitely will start thinking that. But there's a very good reason why we look to build branching structure like this. Okay, it gives a certain aesthetically pleasing result. Okay it gives certain long-term benefits okay this is a this is a whole stream in and of itself but we're just look just looking at this before we get into into pines so we'll just have a look at the next one which is basically the same video but a little bit more geeky so this is the same thing okay but annotated to show the same lengths between the different branches Okay, so we have everything splitting out into twos, into twos. And what we ideally want is to have very similar distances between the different branches. So where we have our secondary branches, we've just marked this as a distance of X. So we want a distance there and there, which are going to be very similar. And then the same thing, perhaps a little bit shorter as we get out towards the branch tips here. Okay, then going forward, we want the lengths of those up until the first branch division on the secondaries to be very similar okay and then once we get out into the the branch tips all of the branch tips want to be of a similar size to their neighboring branches we don't want one branch which is excessively long one branch which is too short we want them all to be of the same order of magnitude the same length as we possibly can okay might look a little bit mathematical but this is what we're looking to try and do. Okay, a bonsai doesn't want to be this pure science, but we use that visualization and that idealization, and it will help us to achieve a desired branching structure. Check all this stuff out, man. I've been playing around on the iPad. But yes, so it, like I say, it does start to look a little bit kind of like mathematical and it's not a question of getting out a measure and making sure that they're all the same. This is idealizations. 
like the graph that we were looking at in the in the energy stream last time it's just an idealization it's just a way in which you can try to visualize what you're trying to achieve a tree like for example a maple tree that is built to that precision would be an incredibly boring tree okay there was a there was a person uh, uh, who was an engineer and he approached it in exactly that fashion and you could almost measure every single node every single branch division and it would be like that and they were the most boring trees you could ever imagine it loses all character okay and so we want to get to that type of idea but not be quite so precise okay and as i said in that video and it will be repeated again one of the reasons that why we try to do that is so that when we look at a tree okay we have a constant density of foliage there's not one area which is really sparse okay so if you look it's a bit difficult to see from the, from a distance but this back this bottom lower branch here is a lot sparser than everything else okay and our eye will tend to go to that area okay our eye will will fixate on differences. The way our mind works, we're designed to look for differences. Okay? And so when we try to design our trees, try to make the foliage pads, try to do all of these things, we try and make things as consistent as possible. Okay, so that when we look at a tree, we don't fix on one single point and we start to look at the whole the tree as a whole. And then once it gets put on display, we can look at the display as a whole. And it paints a much more interesting picture when we have a sparse area or a super dense area which is generally what happens our eyes are always going to tend to to, to, to to go towards that okay and so building up that that sort of very almost regular branching structure okay will help you to create that density that is consistent across the tree now what you can do within that that's not to say that building up that structure means that you have to have exactly precise pads you know like that really super artificial looking precise bottom you know foliage pads with a with a laser cut bottom that's not what we're saying here it's just about building up that branching structure whereby we don't have too many branches all coming from similar points there's good spacing between them okay so that's kind of our, one of the, the goals of building trees just in general okay and candle pinching so the work that we do on the buds and the candles at this time of year with pines will be looking towards both balancing energy redistributing the energy and also pushing towards that goal okay and so really having a clear idea of what your goals are with the tree for that year is an essential part of approaching candle pinching at this time okay Right, just start, look at some questions, see if there's anything uh, worth looking at. Okay, uh, thank you, my style. Yeah, great, some humor cheers. Uh, nuanced, yes it is. Uh, should we in Northern Europe treat double flush pines as single flush pines? Not enough time for the second flush. Uh, essentially, uh, in the UK, for example, um, I don't have any black pines or red pines and so the double flush pines because they are very difficult to be to, to get predictable results from scots pines white pines I'm, I'm i'm quite happy with those i can i can you know predict what's going to happen with them uh with the black pines and red pines you are very much at the mercy of the weather okay it's if we have a very bad summer here then it can be difficult to get that sec enough energy and enough of a you know long growing season to have that second flush okay um and so a few clients that i do have with them we're always on this kind of like do we don't we do we don't we um candle cut in sort of late spring early summer okay in japan they would be tending to do the candle cutting so cutting off all of the spring growth in the first week of june second week of june third week first week of july depending on the size of the tree and the vigor and things like that okay but they know that they're going to have a summer where it's going to be 35 degrees centigrade plus intense sunlight and it's that's going to continue on until late september early october okay here in the uk we could have cloudy rainy summer we could have a super intense hot summer 
we just don't know okay and so it's very difficult to kind of like predict now our native species uh, things that are accustomed to that, uh, that that climate they can cope with that it's not a problem okay whereas working with the black pines and red pines can be difficult it is not it is definitely possible and there are some people in the uk who are perhaps in micro little microclimates or who are very very talented or obsessive um, uh, or have greenhouses use grow lights uh, who can get good results okay but it then starts to become very very difficult okay so if you're having to use grow lights during the, the middle of the summer in order to kind of like boost um the, the tree's uh, energy levels in order for it to push that second flush of growth then you know it's the more moving parts there are in a system the more likelihood there is of of making it difficult and so um it's not to say it's impossible it's just a big challenge okay and i would say nothing smaller than a chew in size tree nothing smaller than like a, a, a medium sized tree there are a few people who've tried doing black pines uh show him black pines in the uk um and interestingly those trees don't exist anymore so it's it's very hard to do the small size trees uh where you're you, you're trying to get that tiny little needle size because essentially the the whole purpose of doing that candle cutting of the two, the two flush pines, reds and blacks, in the early summer, late spring, is so that the growing season is, is shortened. Okay, uh, and that you've wasted energy of the tree. So that second flush of growth, because it's a shorter growing season, the tree has wasted energy. The needles are going to be shorter because it has less energy to use, less time to grow, so the needles become shorter. When we live in a country where the intensity of the sunlight is forty percent less than, say, in Spain. Why would we want to do that? Right? You're just you're just asking for for, for difficulties there, and so it's 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 very difficult to, to kind of get that predictable um, uh, results. Okay, uh, and so generally, what I tend to, to do with a lot of people is try and treat them as single flush pines, so no candle cutting in the in the summer. However, then with black pines, which are very vigorous trees what you can end up with is the problem of the tree being too vigorous because it's ha it, it, it's it's counting on losing some of that energy okay so it's a strong tree it's expecting to lose half of the energy in the summer right? and it doesn't and so it just keeps growing and growing and growing get, getting more and more vigorous and so we have to look at techniques such as being um, no fertilizer not repotting as much um, and just kind of like trying to restrict the water a little bit, particularly during um, the, the time when the, the needles are extending out, just to try and, and slow it down. Okay, and then you can get some some very good results. Okay, but even then you still get differences in um, in bud strength and things like that. So it's difficult. It's difficult. I would say anywhere kind of like above the middle of France and upwards, you're starting to look at making it hard unless you live in some microclimates you'll be able to do it and things like that uh, but i tend to, to not bother with them because against scots pines mugos white pines particularly the grafted white pines you can get much much better results um much easier and so i don't like the, the stupidity at all uh do 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 right uh i have a sylvester's yamadori right okay i have a sylvester's yamadori picked up myself last september now she's turning a little faded gray yellow the candles actually don't come out what should i do more shade full sun uh send me some pictures uh i don't know uh geeky is good love that da, da, da. Why, I don't know why you need to pee. Do, do, do. Especially on birthday. Blind buds branch. Okay. Uh, right. Can you talk about blind buds and a branch with a blind tip push a bud the next autumn? So, uh, okay. We'll do this. This is one question. Uh, no, we'll, t we'll, come, we'll come to that later, actually. Um, after we, we, we follow this next one. So, right. Um... So what you need to then, so we'll get back to, to, to candle cutting and stuff. So we've, we've forgotten about uh, two flush pines. We're on to, to single flush pines here. And we're talking about Sylvestris, Mugos, white pines. Okay. What we need to do at this time of year is have a clear idea of what we're trying to achieve. Okay. So we need to look at the tree, evaluate the tree. Think, what am I trying to achieve with it this year? 
and how is working with the, the, the spring growth, what's coming out now, going to help that. Okay, so we looked at the branching structure, trying to achieve that, looking at things like the uh, distributing the energy. Okay, one of the main sort of starting points with, with, with working with candles and working with pines, particularly if trees begin to get leggy or they're freshly collected, is how do we get back budding? Okay, it's one of the biggest challenges for a lot of people. And so the way in which we get back budding is to build up an incredible amount of energy within the tree throughout the, the, the growing season. And then at that point of the year where the tree is beginning to redistribute the energy, we then tell it where we want it to go. Okay, and that will be illustrated in this video here. So we start the year with a big fat pregnant bud ready to grow and last year's needles. Over the course of the month uh, into early May, this starts to grow and turn into a candle. The candle is soft, greeny, and has little triangles forming all over it, which then turn into needles. If we want adventitious budding, we allow this to grow out without pinching it. Just leave it to grow. Once we get into July, then the growth has stopped and the tree is thinking about where it can redistribute its energy. The tree wants to set buds at the tip and send all of its energy there. We do not want that to happen. What we do is we come in and cut off all of this year's growth right back to where we started in April. Now this might seem like a very scary thing to do, but the tree is full of energy and that energy now has to go somewhere. So what you'll tend to see is one very strong bud forming at the tip, potentially with two uh, by the side. Uh, and then what we're after is that adventitious bud formation. So buds which are forming further back along the branch and in particular around the base of needles. What we then need to do in late August, September is decide which buds we want to keep for the following year based on a number of different factors. Always keep in mind what your objective is to create a branching structure whereby all of the branches are of similar vigour, of similar strength, of similar thickness and separated by a similar distance. If you keep that in mind then you can pick those buds which will give you that end result. Apologies for the uh talentless drawing uh, but hopefully you get the right idea uh, about what we're trying to achieve there okay so this is the case whereby you are you have a long leggy branch the tree or the tree is particularly weak okay so collected you know sort of relative fr freshly collected trees perhaps not for the first year first couple of years after collection uh, but things that where you are really just looking at building up a lot of energy but you want the, the back budding to come okay so push the tree so in this type of um, uh, situation you'd be looking at fertilizing it a suitable amount okay so a tree which has a good root system you can fertilize a little bit more a tree which is a little bit like sort of freshly collected and things like that maybe doesn't have a like a super healthy root system you wouldn't want to be fertilizing that too much okay but a suitable amount of fertilizer seaweed uh, extract pushing the growth making it elongate okay now the one thing that was just a very basic kind of idea okay the one thing that just kind of allowing completely free growth um, will uh, perhaps occur is and we'll look at this in the next video um, the the stronger areas will get very very strong okay so there may be a certain amount of candle pinching on the real strong areas so if you know we're allowing free growth and what we're noticing is two or three areas are getting really strong and then the weaker areas aren't getting quite so strong there may be a, a point where maybe in late Mar uh, late May you'll come in and just stop those um, those tips in order to, to stop them from really just dominating. But generally, it's a question of kind of like essentially kind of like allowing them to grow up quite freely. Okay, fertilizing them, pushing them, making the tree a bush. The tree is going to look like a bush over the summer months. Okay, but that is going to be good because it's just got a lot of needles on it. It's going to be photosynthesizing. It's going to need perhaps a bit more water than, than, than maybe normal okay but it's going to be just generating so much energy 
can create then once it starts to come towards that time of the the, the year so once we get past the summer solstice once the daylights uh, the, 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 the daylight out the, the hours of sunshine in a day is starting to get shorter so the days are getting shorter okay the tree is starting to think okay now is the time I need to start redistributing my energy start storing it in buds start storing it in the roots that's the time when you come in and you cut all of that off it's a very scary thing to do okay but it will set buds where you've cut because there's so much energy okay the analogy I like to use is imagine you have a hose pipe okay which is like two hose pipes connected together okay uh, you turn on the water and there's just a little trickle this is the tree at the start of the year just a little trickle of water coming out the hose pipe okay if by allowing the the, the, the needles the candles to grow the tree to be super healthy that's essentially building up pressure okay the water is gushing through that water you know the energy of the tree is just gushing through okay and you've got masses of water passing through okay in late July, early August, when we come to cut, essentially what we're doing with our hose pipe is we're putting a finger on the end of the hose pipe and we're stopping it from going out, stopping any water from escaping from the end. Okay, because that's where it wants to go, to that terminal bud. Once we stop it there, where's it going to go? The pressure in the hose is going to build up and those fault lines, so where the, the hose pipe is joined together, that's where it's all going to burst out. Okay, in the, the case of the tree, when we stop it at the tip, where does it burst out? It bursts out in adventitious buds where there are needles. It bursts out adventitious buds further along on youthful branches. It won't go as far back as the you know the trunk and, and, and older branches. But that's what we're doing. We're building up the pressure within the within the branch, and we're stopping it, and it comes out everywhere else. Okay, and that works particularly well. Uh, with Sylvestris and it works particularly well with with Mugos as well if you can get them growing that well uh, with white pine okay um, on their own stock okay so so seedling white pines in, in particularly in the UK you're not going to get that aggressive uh, a response okay because they, they they really need a little bit more sunlight than, than they'll tend to get in the UK okay so you can you can take that approach but don't expect as um, uh, kind of like you know, it's such a, a vigorous uh, reply to, to what you're doing and, and it to, to burst out everywhere. Um, and then the same goes obviously for, for the Zuisho um, uh, and Kokonoe types. You will get a response, but it won't be as explosive as you would do with, say, the Sylvestris. Okay, so that's the case of what we would be looking to do with um, uh, when we're looking at like really sort of developing back buds. Okay. One of the important things there is that they're being very, very sort of selective of the buds. Okay, so it's not just a case uh, with bonsai of just trying to get as many back buds as we possibly can. You've then got to be very selective. So that last bit of that video where we're actually sort of going in and choosing those buds which we want to grow is how we then get our idealised branching structure. Okay, and so uh, there is a pine that I have which uh, is a good example of that. So here's a video sort of looking at that, and then there's some. Pictures. So with this tree, we ask ourselves you know, what we're we trying to achieve this year. And what we're trying to achieve is vigor and back budding. Okay, we're also trying to achieve a desirable branching structure whereby this doesn't become too coarse, and we have back buds turning into branches in the areas where we want them to be. And so that bud selection process is essential the start of the year okay and then we will look at how we can use candle pinching or not pinching for the most part in order to help us achieve that goal so for, for the branch tips generally what we'll look at doing is allowing them to, to develop into candles and allowing them to extend this tree has been fertilized very heavily okay so the whole surface of the, st of the soil is covered in organic fertilizer so that's going to help to push the nitrogen there is going to help to push that green growth the extensions out there okay if we get big long extensions like this then maybe we'll start we'll just look at pinching the tip to stop it from extending off too much and for the branches to become coarse okay but what we'll definitely be doing is cutting off all of this year's growth in late july august 
Okay, we really got to force back budding as far back up along the trunk as we possibly can. Okay, and where we have those buds further back in, we've got to look at how we can develop those as much as possible. Okay, so we'll be looking at really building up those buds and other buds in the second part of the year. And in order to do that, we need long extensions lots of needles, lots of photosynthesis, lots of energy generation. Then when it comes time for energy redistribution, we come in and cut back. Okay, uh, right, we're having a few technical difficulties with the iPhone camera. Uh, so we're back onto the webcam. So, Bastard thing. Um, so yes. Uh, oh, oh, are we back? Are we back? Are we back? No. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we're just gonna have to pick up the um, the flickering. I'm afraid. It was bound to happen. Um, right. So yes, that's uh, looking at that kind of like the the, the bud selection um, of. Uh, um, when, when we get all of those adventitious buds and so it's not just simply a case of trying to get as many as we can it's about going through and being very kind of um, aware of which ones we choose um, and sort of going through and picking them out very very uh, importantly so we've got a few um, pictures of that which I can talk over uh, here we go okay so here's a few of those buds uh, so you can see um, like this is before, so this is one of those um, uh, the, a branch where we've got lots and lots of, of those adventitious buds. There's, there's hundreds of them, basically everywhere. Okay, if we allowed all of those to to, to grow out and develop, we're just going to end up with like a cluster of tiny little buds, um, which aren't going to develop out into shoots. Okay, um, let me just go back to the camera. Okay, so basically with all those tiny little buds, what you'll what you'll end up with is this yeah. right so they'll, you're all, you've got five or six tiny little buds which all trying to, to, to get a, a finite amount of energy and they're all just going to go yeah, and not grow out what we want to do is have two or three which go out really strongly like this grow out okay rather than yeah. okay and so going through and being very selective of those buds okay looking for the best position ones the ones which are going to be um, give you the best sort of separation between them. Okay. Oh dear. Um, the sort of the better, you know, a good separation. So you, you, you're getting that, that good node length. Okay. So the separation between the, you know, the, the branches as they will then become. Okay. So one of the things you need to try and imagine is like, if you're going to wire that branch, you need the separation between the, those buds, which will become branches to be enough so that you can get a decent coil of wire around them okay rather than you know trying to try to squeeze it in there uh, and then also looking at the directions okay so you don't want buds that are going to be growing into other other branches uh, or other buds and then also the strengths okay so generally we'll be looking at trying to keep the strongest ones rather than the weaker ones okay so this is another example you can see all of those tiny little buds which have formed uh, in and around the the branch division area okay and then there's two uh, sort of very stronger looking branches okay so all of those tiny little ones get removed because all they're going to do is kind of like get in the way okay and we want to channel all of the energy into the three slightly larger buds and that's that bud selection once we've achieved them Okay, so the previous year this tree was allowed to grow out, was then cut back hard in late July, August. All of those adventitious buds formed, okay, and now they've been selected. Okay, the other thing that we would want to do at this time um, is look at taking out that strongest terminal bud. Okay, as I said in the video, one of the ideas for this tree, again, is, is going to still be allow it to grow out quite rapidly, quite a lot. Okay, but in this time in a bit more of a controlled manner. Okay, and so we're looking at the redistribution of energy. So we need to uh, emasculate this uh, this this bit here and take out that central section. Okay, always taking out that central one to push the energy into the into those secondary buds. Okay, so 
that's one of the, the, the Spanish ones I've got. So obviously it's a little bit more kind of behind uh, and they're, they're sort of still buds at the moment. Okay, but they will then turn into candles. Okay, and we'll look at, somebody asked about uh, what we uh, do if, uh, how do you, um, are you letting all the candles grow out before cutting back? Um, have we lost the stream? No. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry, we're having a few technical difficulties here. Um, right, so what were we talking about? Uh, talking about actually kind of like the pinching candles and when we're doing it. Right, so uh, the... The bud selection, uh, somebody mentioned about bud selection um, and when, uh, when that should be doing it. Um, we should be doing that uh, now or earlier. Okay, so that's something that the sooner you do it, the better. So the, the less energy that goes into uh, buds, which you're going to get then um, sort of cut off, uh, the better. Okay, so it should have been done as soon as possible. Um, so now you start to see them waking up and a lot of those tiny ones that we just saw on, on, on those pictures, they've only really just started to come out now. Okay, so this is that's something to, to, to definitely kind of like um, be doing at this sort of time of year. Now those buds are going to start turning into candles. Okay, uh, and so we'll look at uh, what we would do with um, sort of candle pinching if we were going to go about doing that now. Okay, right. So... Um, now we're going to look at what we actually do. So the, the, the previous examples have basically been just kind of like allowing them to grow out. So no candle pinching at this time of year. Okay. And there's reasons why we do that. Okay. So there's no candle pinching. Now we've done essentially no candle pinching and bud selection. Okay. Now we're going to look at what we actually do with the candle pinching. Okay. And why we do it. And it's essentially to try and balance the energy. Okay. So when we get a situation where we have all of those adventitious buds. Okay. Uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that all of those buds on the tree are all kind of like growing and developing at the same time. Okay, so once we get to a little bit more of a refined stage, so the previous tree was very much raw, okay, raw material, we're looking at, you know, building up the adventitious buds, looking at pushing the energy into them. Once we've got a, a tree which is a little bit more established, a bit more refined, what do we do with that? Okay, and so here is a example, sort of a, one of those uh, illustrations. Here we look at the situation where we have multiple buds at the tip at the start of the year. In April we start off with one strong bud, one side shoot which is slightly weaker, and then adventitious bud which is weaker still. By the end of April, so round about now, the buds have turned into candles and that strong bud has turned into a very strong candle which is elongating out. And so what we do now is we pinch the tip of that strong candle. What that will do is divert more energy towards the secondary bud and adventitious bud, causing them to grow and extend. When the secondary bud has reached the same length as the primary bud, we will want to come in and pinch the tip of the secondary bud. Doing so will then divert more energy towards the adventitious bud. Then we move into June and the needles start to extend. If we are working on refinement of the tree and we're looking for short needles, we do not fertilise during this time. Another thing to be careful of is needle cast. At this time, the needles are soft and susceptible to it and other fungal diseases. Once we move into late July, we'll start to see bud formation occurring, particularly at the tip. But then as we move into August, we see an imbalance in the bud strength, particularly at the tip where one strong bud may dominate. And then also adventitious buds may form towards the base of needles and further along the branch. We then have to look at bud selection 
similar to the previous example where we look at balancing strength, blood density and also the separation of nodes. We can also do some reduction of older needles but not taking all of them off, just those where the density of needles is becoming too dense uh, and they're interfering with the aesthetics of the tree uh, and also with the newer needles. We don't just take the old needles off for the sake of taking them off. The last thing to do towards the end of the year, September, October, is just to check that the distribution of the bud strength energy is the same. Some new adventitious buds may have formed uh, and so they could be removed. Okay, we're back on the iPhone camera. Lord knows why. Uh, right, so yes, so that's what we're looking at doing when we're really balancing up the energy. Okay, so where the pine is always going to be looking at uh, trying to push into one bud. Okay, sort of remember back to our, the, the, the energy stream. You know, all the trees interested in is being efficient, so it's going to try and send all of its energy into the areas which are going to give it the most return on its investment, which will be the top of the tree, the external branches. Okay, and within those branches, okay, it will send it to the areas where the buds are strongest, where the branches are strongest, where the supply network to those areas are strongest. Okay, and then it's our job at this time of year, okay, over the next month to ensure that that balance is maintained in by stopping the candle extension in the strong areas and, and, and pushing the energy which is coming up th you know through the tree with the energy which is in the system pushing that into um into those weaker buds the adventitious buds the side shoots things like that particularly um uh with um well with all of them if you don't do that then what will tend to happen so here's a, an example of a, of a white pine branch Okay, cut off from the tree earlier. Okay, so if we don't do that, okay, if we don't hold back the tip, then what will tend to happen is that these side shoots which are formed, okay, they will die off relatively quickly. Okay, so there is a small little bud candle developing on that one. Okay, you can see. But if that doesn't uh, get its fair share of energy by stopping the tip, then that will die off within a year or two. Okay, and this is why we tend to see leggy trees okay because there hasn't been enough effort put into pushing things back okay pushing them back into those side buds okay once we've developed those adventitious buds by using the first technique that we looked at allowing it to grow out until july august then cutting it back really hard boom we get that explosion of adventitious buds once we've got them there then we need to start pushing the energy in the in the spring back into those buds to allow those to grow out okay and that's what we're trying to do by the, the the candle pinching okay how we do that okay these are still quite small okay but what we would look at doing is focus focus it's focusing on me all right just holding it towards the base and pinching off at the suitable length okay that's all it is okay just snapping it back pinching it back okay Coming in, holding it at the base so we don't tear the whole thing off. Okay, and just snapping it off so that we have a suitable number of proto needles coming through. Okay, we'll look at that a little bit in the next video. Okay, but that's what we'll be looking at doing. Ideally, they should be a little bit longer before we get in and, and, and do that. Okay, so that's why we're kind of like covering it a little bit earlier in the season. So our, most of the candles should be just starting to extend out a little bit now. Okay, so for a lot of the trees, maybe this, this work is going to be another two or three weeks away. Okay, but that's what we're looking at doing. Okay, one of the questions was from Alex. Um, where was it? Uh, what do you do if you lose all, if you lose the, um, I can't even find the question now. Uh, if you remove all this year's growth, can't you lose that too? Are you talking about at the at the cutting at the end of the year? Um, no, I, I mean you could do if, if the tree isn't strong enough. Okay, um, but not now. Uh, uh, and if you remove the like the, the the entire candle at this time of year, that is a lot more dangerous. Okay, you're much more likely to lose. Uh, like that that branch 
if you remove all of it um, at this time of year because it's not it, it hasn't built up that energy okay so that cutting back of the of the tip in the in in, in, in the latter part of the year is very much um, uh, dependent on having a super strong uh, growing season okay so really pushing it through the growing season making sure it's a bush and then cutting it back okay if you remove the growing tips if those buds are, uh, are kind of removed at this time of year then you, you you're going to be in uh, in a lot more sort of difficult sort of situation okay um if the stream just because i'm having a bit of difficulty with my preview uh if the stream disappears uh somebody can text me um right uh we'll talk about flowering uh in uh, in a little bit and we'll get on to that bit um okay on the last diagram when would you perform structural pruning of branches oh, i've got a message from john oh dear it's all right we lost camera and we're back sorry okay uh we'll try to forget some of the questions we'll keep on with it we, we, otherwise we're going to run out of time um okay so that's what we're looking at doing in terms of like trying to balance up all those um uh, the, the the candles and, and, and the, the energy okay so we'll just look at the example of doing that um with this tree here uh, and that should answer some of those questions so here we have a scotch pine that is on the verge of being ready to be pinched uh this is uh, a new forest scotch pine uh, that's been as a bonsai for a, for a long time um it's planted on a slab uh, in a very similar way to one of the previous ones I just made recently uh, so that it gets um, restricted growth. Um, the new forest pines tend to be very, very vigorous. Um, they are from uh, you know, sort of stock that is designed to be forestry trees and so their genetics were chosen to be very, very vigorous. So they tend to grow very, very strongly. Okay. Uh, and as a result, this is one of the kind of like the earliest uh, to push its candles. OK, and so you can see a number of candles all beginning to grow and, uh, and push out. OK, and this is a little bit further along than, say, some of my Spanish ones. Uh, or the uh, sort of the, the one from Scotland, the Benagan uh, Scots Pines. OK, so this is always one of the first ones to, to get done. Okay, so far this has had no fertilizer at all, uh, and we'll get none at all. Okay, so the goal is to try to get even bud strength, candle strength, all over the tree in the next month. Okay, and so if we look at this one here as an example, we have a very strong bud at the tip. We can see a secondary little candle just beginning to develop underneath there and then if we look behind here we have an adventitious bud which is just trying to trying to push okay so we will come in and pinch this back okay and stop its extension okay by doing that energy will be diverted into this bud and this bud and hopefully within the next month they will get to a similar length and strength as this one we do that across the whole tree okay so we'll just go along if it's long enough we can just kind of like hold it at the base just pinch out the tip There we go just kind of like snap it off just snap it off if it's not quite long enough yet just leave it okay and what that will do is it will restrict the elongation the extension of the candle okay and it will push the growth or push the energy will have it can't go to the tip 
Okay, so the energy that's in the roots, the energy that is in the trunk, the energy that's in the branches cannot go to the tip because it's just been pinched off and so it will be redirected to those adventitious buds further back in and they will strengthen and they'll grow. Okay, what we do need to look at however is the proximity of some of those adventitious buds. Okay, just because it's an adventitious bud doesn't mean we necessarily need it. Okay, and so two very close to each other, we'll just remove one of them. Okay, we want a good separation between all of these buds as they turn into branches. We can also look at perhaps removing some of the older needles where there are too many. Okay, we'll have a consistent number of needles around each area. And so sometimes you might need to look at removing some. Like here, for example, it's just a little bit too dense around the end. So we just take off some, just so we've got a nice consistent number. Okay, so top to bottom, inside to out, we will get even growth. Okay, when we have even growth and consistent density across the tree, our eye is not drawn to any one area of inconsistency. So we look at the tree as a whole rather than focusing on one area. Okay, uh, so hopefully I answered a few of the questions on the chat there. I think that might be a bit of a better way to try and uh, deal with it rather than reading through them and answering them uh, here. Um, right, so that's kind of like the first attempt or the first phase of candle uh, pinching. Uh, so sort of th thinking back to that um, little uh, illustration that we did, that's the late April bit where we're coming in and we're pinching the tips off of the strongest buds, okay? I'll need to revisit that tree again in a week's time. Maybe just give it a, the once over, see if any buds have developed out a little bit further, and then maybe in another week and then in another week, okay? And just doing it little by little, little by little. So in essence, it's very similar to um, the maple pinching that we were talking about when we were talking about it a while back. It's that going out and doing it on a very sort of short period of time, but on, on over over a longer period of time. So, for example, it needs 20 minutes of work to pinch all of those candles. I don't just bring it into the workshop once those candles have got massive uh, and, and and do it. I will do five, you know five minutes one day five minutes a week later, five minutes a week after that, and then another five minutes a week after that. So over the course of a month, I've spent 20 minutes working on the tree. I've not just done it all in one sitting. And it's that small, that little and often approach will enable you to waste less energy. So there'll be less energy falling on the floor, more energy staying within the tree and going to those areas that you want it to. Okay, so that little and often approach where you just pinch a few little bits here, a few little bits there, will give you a, a much, much better result and you can get to your, your end goal a lot quicker, okay? One of the other things that that will also enable you to do is that, that kind of like regular checking of it, particularly around about this time of the year, is it'll also give you the opportunity to check for aphids, okay? So you get these uh, sort of blackish, grayish aphids which are feeding on the, on the needles um, and also woolly adelgids, so white woolly aphids that will be particularly around the bases of buds and the base of the needles, undersides of branches and things like that. It gives you a good opportunity to, to sort of check for those. Uh, the best thing to do with the, the those kind of grey woolly aphids, the, the ones that you can actually sort of see uh, crawling around, is physical removal. So, you know, go around every morning when you see them. Um, it's one of those problems you're always going to have, no matter how kind of like... Um, organic you are and things like that it's, it's just yeah, they and the, the trees live with them but you go and you just pull them off so like put, you know, just gently kind of run your fingers along the needles where all those aphids are you're gonna end up with greasy aphid death knee, uh, hands uh, but that's one of the easiest ways to get rid of them um, if the if it's really badly infected then using the soap spray uh, or a, a contact uh, insecticide killer uh, will work the soap is just as good as, as anything uh, with the woolly adelgids, so the white woolly aphids that you'll see at the base of the, the needles and things like that, the uh, soap and oil spray will work on that, but maybe not as effective because it has like a woolly uh, covering over the top of it. Um, and so maybe um, looking at something like Provado or some type of um, 
systemic insecticide could be worthwhile. But generally what you will find is that a small infestation of the woolly adelgid is absolutely fine for, for most trees. Um, natural predators will come in. Okay, If it's starting to really take over branches um, and, and kind of like affect a, a very weakened tree, then you're going to need to go in and do some treatment. But I've got it on two of my pines outside. Just keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't get too, but too, too out of hand. You know, the buds are developing on them as I would expect them to, and so I'm, I'm not going to go in and, and, and treat it too much. I have sprayed it with the soap uh, and oil spray. The one thing about woolly adelgids that you will often um, be a bit confusing for people is you can kill them, but they, 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 they remain on the tree. And this is true for scale insect as well. Um, and so if you do, if you ha are having an infestation of the, the white woolly adelgids, what you can do is take a photograph of one branch Okay, maybe put a little tag on it so you remember which one it is. Spray it with whatever you're spraying. Ideally, try and keep it as organic as possible because you don't want to kill the predators that are around you. Okay, ladybirds and, uh, and you know other uh, insects, mites, wasps, all sorts of stuff. Okay, um, and then leave it. Come back a week, take another picture of exactly the same thing and compare the two. If the white has increased, then you then they're still alive. They're multiplying and and getting more and more and more um, if it's sort of stayed the same uh, then there's a good chance that they're all dead but they're just the, the, the casing remains on on the tree okay just rubbing it off uh, the adelgids <coughs> um, will uh, also help as well you know with, with kind of realizing whether or not they, they, they're, they're still living on there okay so when, we, when we're looking at that kind of balancing up and trying to, to, to keep our you know, nice even distribution across the entire tree. Okay, it's that little and often approach which is which is going to bear you the, the most um, uh, kind of like reward with that. Uh, I've, I've done that on a couple of trees. This one um, and uh, one of my Benagan uh, Scots pines, um, the one in the red pot. And you know, within sort of three or four years, they've become accustomed to it. They've become uh, very well balanced and now they need very very little work in order to, to, to keep them like that okay uh, once you achieve that balance you've just got to, it, it they, 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 they're, they're broken okay they're not wild anymore um, and they, they behave themselves a lot easier and so you, you don't have to be as kind of aggressive with them growing them out cutting them back okay as long as you stay on top of them little enough and just, just don't let them get too far away they will sort of stay in shape a lot easier okay Right. Um, one thing we haven't discussed uh, is the role of fertilizer uh, in this. It has been mentioned in a couple of them, okay, uh, in a couple of the videos. Um, but really, looking at, you need to look at fertilizer as being uh, an accelerator for candle extension and also needle extension, okay. If there is nitrogenous fertilizer in there, okay, so if you're feeding it, feeding it, feeding it there will be the ability for the tree to send out long, large candles and long, large needles. Okay, so if that is your goal, the first style of grow it out, cut it back, feed it heavily. If it isn't, this tree, my other sort of literati sort of style tree that we looked at in previous streams, then we don't want to be feeding them. We want to be holding back. But the one thing we do want to be doing, and particularly towards the latter part of the year where we are looking at cutting back, is the seaweed extract, the liquid seaweed extract, because that has amino acids, certain chemicals, hormones within, which will really, really help the adventitious budding. So we've got to make sure that that is part of the, of the mix. Okay. Right. Uh, so those are the kind of like the two main ideas for, for, for candle pinching, either not pinching at all or pinching to kind of like balance up um, on, on a refined tree. Okay. Uh, and so in between, we have all these other different cases, which a lot of people have kind of been asking about. Okay. Um, so um, what we'll do is just have, have a look at the video of uh, a lot of different trees in the garden and what I would be doing my approach, just, just quickly talk through it, approach for like five or six different sort of scenarios, different types of trees, including some that are flowering. Okay. So let's get that up, walk around the garden. So what we're going to do is just have a look at some of the trees in the garden. 
and figure out what we'll be doing candle pinching wise. Okay, so this is a giant Mugo pine. Big crazy tenjin sticking out there. Okay, Mugo pines are much slower growing than say Scots pines. Okay, but we treat them exactly the same. This tree has been relatively freshly collected and it was repotted last year. Very, very sort of stressful. Last year it was just left to grow. This year we have a lot of flowers. Okay, so this year there will be absolutely no candle pinching done whatsoever. Okay, and lots of fertilizing. Okay, so we'll push the green growth through the candles and look and try and get as much elongation as we can. Okay, the goal for this tree is just to build energy for the year. Here's another Scots pine. This is a Spanish one. Bud strength on this is a lot better, but it has uh, set out lots of um, flowers. Okay, so again, what we'll probably end up doing with this one is feeding it just a little bit, not too much. We don't have to push it too much and just allow things to grow out. Okay, for candles where there are no flowers, what we can do is maybe just pinch the tip once it gets a little bit longer than that and stop it. Okay, uh, but what we're going to want to do is just allow everything to grow out to the late July, August period and then come in and cut back. Otherwise, we're going to end up with that bare stem. Okay, here's a Benagan Scots pine, so from Scotland. Okay, this one is in the process of being developed, but last year there was some candle pinching done on it. Okay, uh, and bud selection, and we've got a good range of medium strength buds all over the tree. Okay, so I'm going to keep an eye on that, uh, and if they start to, you know, if one of them starts to go slightly longer, then it'll get pinched. Um, we're looking in a, in a sort of a stage of, of keeping it in control this year uh, but one thing that started to happen is at the end of some of the, the candles we're starting to see a female flower developing okay and this is quite good in the sense that uh, it's going to stop the extension of the candle okay and then what will happen there is a purple flower will um, develop okay and if that gets pollinated which it will do because there's plenty of boys in the area um, then it'll turn to a pine cone, which will need to be removed. Okay, so in a sense, that candle formation has stopped the elongation of the candle. Okay, and so we're gonna look at making sure that none of the other candles go much longer than that. We'll take that flower off once it's sort of truly developed a little bit further, and it's easier to get off. Okay, but really we're looking at just balancing the energy on this tree. Okay, here we have a Pinus uncinata, so a cross between a Mugo and a Sylvestris, essentially. It's relatively slow growing, okay, uh, but one of the problems with this tree is it didn't have a whole lot of roots. I've had it a couple of years now, uh, and so we're really just looking at building up energy and strength, lots of foliage on the tree to help push the root development, okay, and it's been styled once, and it's going to need another styling towards the end of the year. Okay, so just keep an eye on the candle development. So far, they're not really pushing really strongly. It has been fed well. Okay, but I doubt I'll need to pinch the, 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 the tips too much on this, nor will I be cutting back aggressively in August. Okay, in the polytunnel, we have two, three uh, Scots pines that were repotted quite, uh, uh, quite a stressful repot um, this spring. Okay, uh, one of this one in particular was doing very uh, badly in the soil it was in. You can see how yellow it is. Uh, the tree is beginning to pick up um, and we can see good, strong bud development since the repot. Okay, so I'm happy that it's doing well and it's going to push through. Got the tree like this, the candle extension, nothing will be touched at all in the spring. Okay, same thing here. This was a very stressful repot. I thought I'd killed the tree, but the buds are swelling beautifully. Okay, so it's pushing and so we're going to use whatever energy is in the tree to allow to push out and allow those candles to extend off so it can photosynthesize generate lots and lots of energy and it can put all of those energy into the roots in the autumn here was a tree i picked up at salia last year from arnaud de bois who i hope got the name right uh who uh, had collected it a year previously um and it the buds on it then were strong and healthy looking, albeit very small, and now they're really beginning to swell and grow out and it's pushing good growth all over the tree. Okay, but because it's freshly collected, exactly the same reason 
as with the previous uh, repotted trees. Okay, we need as much good green on this as we possibly can for a year or two. And so no candle, no candle work will be done on this at all. Here we have a tree which is in the process of being reworked. There's a small amount of flowering, but not a lot. Okay, but what we have at the moment is some grafting being done in various different places on the tree. Okay, so the branch is being bent around and approach grafted. Okay, so anywhere that is, okay, so the graft is happening here. Anything that is above the graft will be left to grow relatively unchecked. Okay, so we'll allow some good long extensions here. So there will be a lot of energy flowing back down that will heal the graft site. Okay, other branches, um, for example, perhaps this one here, which is below, nothing, uh, no grafting is being done on there. Perhaps they will get pinched just to keep the elongations from getting too far away. Okay, uh, part of this that tree uh, was grafted. Uh, some roots were grafted into this. Okay, so roots were grafted into a branch, and that branch was separated this spring. Okay, uh, and so this is doing brilliantly healthy now. And for that same reason, there will be no candle work done to this. It will just be allowed to grow again help strengthen up the graft union to help strengthen up the root system which is perfectly healthy okay and to give the the, the foliage on this tree um, a future okay here is a white pine on its own rootstock uh, which is planted onto a rock one of the reasons why it's planted on the rock is to make sure it keeps dry okay uh, last year it was very very healthy uh, it grew very well uh, and but this year it's had a major um, reworking of the root system okay um, it's, it's responded very well you can see the the buds turned into candles and they've extended out nicely um, but once it reaches this sort of um, situation there uh, you can sort of see it's just kind of like beginning to open out it looks a bit like a cauliflower um, there's going to be no more extension on that and so there'll be nothing to pinch so all that will happen is they will then start to turn into needles and extend out Okay, and that will be all there is to do in the spring. Okay, we'll be fertilizing this tree to make sure we get as long a needle as we can so we have enough energy so that it puts itself onto the rock nice and securely, gets over the trauma. And then from next year, we'll start to think about how we can look at reducing the needle length in the late spring, early summer period. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of different trees which are going to need a lot of different approaches depending on how much energy there is within the system, how much energy we need, and in which different areas. Okay, so for example, the areas that have been grafted, we need to have a certain amount of energy flowing through, and we're going to get that energy from the, the amount of needles that we allow to develop on the tree. By allowing candle extension, we're going to allow more needles to develop. Okay. And so we just need to bear that in mind. For the, those freshly repotted trees, a serious aggressive repot, we need as much energy uh, to be generated this season as we possibly can. So allowing those buds to develop into good strong candles, beginning to feed little, and then ramping it up as the tree starts to respond. We don't want to feed it lots and lots and lots, thinking that the tree is going to get super strong super quickly. Okay, Imagine that you are that tree and you have been... Um, you've undergone a massive surgery okay you've had your guts cut open and and then sewn up sewn back up again which is essentially what we've done to the tree what's the last thing you want to do is eat a greasy breakfast or eat a, a, a Philly cheesesteak what you want is just a few little sips of water and then once you start to feel like you're like recovering you maybe start off with some dry toast and then you start off with a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and so that's essentially what the the approach that you need to take with the trees once they start to to, to, to grow and show signs of growth and the roots are active then we can start adding a little bit more fertilizer to to, to, to the soil which will then push a little bit for more growth and then we can start adding a bit more growth to it but essentially what with that growth what that fertilizer will do is push the the, the, the extensions on the candles which will then push bigger needles, which will then photosynthesize more, which will then generate more energy, which will then go into the roots. Okay, so no candle kind of pinching at that point. The one big question that a lot of people had about is about flowering. Okay, 
uh, and some of those examples that we had there, there were some 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 flowers present. Okay, now how we respond to that is a little bit dependent on kind of the amount of flowering that we have. Okay, we can live with a little bit of flowering, uh, and with what we're talking about is the male flowers. Okay, so the the little pollen cones that that form at the base of a candle. Okay, rather than that female flower which is which developed at the top. Okay, so when they when you get that female flower that comes on the top. Essentially, as I said in the video, that stops the, the, the development. What happens with the, the, the male candles uh, is, get my little trusty uh, uh, whiteboard here. Okay, so this is the, 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 the needle from last year, and then the bud starts to grow out. Okay, it's a bit difficult to draw and at this angle. Okay, and then we get all of these flowers starting to form at the base. Okay, and then our candle then sort of starts to go here, which will then grow out into needles. Okay. Like this. Okay. So flowers. This is terrible. Okay. Form there. And what happens is in about a month or so, those flowers will have emitted all of their pollen and then they will drop off. Okay. And so what we end up with, if we kind of pinch the tip and we restrict that growth down okay what we end up with is a massive long elongation um, and a big bare spot here okay all right so we have last year's needles big big gap there and the new needles this is coming in back to front for people um mirror image <laughs> lesson just note to self uh and so what we would want to do there is essentially go back to that first um, method of dealing with the candles whereby we're looking at growing it out we're feeding it we feed it through that stage of flowering we push those candles we make them elongate and then we cut everything off we come back in and we come and cut all of that growth off this year okay but you can only do that if you have fertilized it well you've allowed it to grow out and really develop big long needles Okay, and it's got lots and lots of energy. And it's really photosynthesizing and it's really going gangbuster strong. Okay, if you get to that sort of situation, then you can come back in and cut back hard. Okay, so for some of the trees where we're getting a little bit of flowering and maybe it's not a lot, and we're, we're just going to end up with a little bit of a bold spot uh, on, on, the, on what will become the branch, we can live with that. It's not too much of a problem, but if it's really heavy flowering and it's a long, um, section of it then what I would look at doing is fertilize it very heavily just write this year off as a loss okay just fertilize it really well make it grow make the candles push through that and extend off the top of it big long needles come in cut it all off start again next year now why did uh, why did trees trees uh, why did pines flower I if I knew I would I, I would I'd, I'd be a millionaire but um some people say it's stress. I've had trees which were incredibly stressed and never flowered. I've had trees which were incredibly healthy uh, and flower like crazy. I fertilised some trees heavily with high PK fertiliser in the um, in the autumn, uh, and it's never flowered. I fertilised them nothing at all, and they flower. It's just some years it happens a lot more than others. I've never been able to kind of put my finger on it. Okay, uh, you would get. Um, Uh, you did some different results different years okay um, so I, I, there's no kind of rhyme or reason to it that I know of at the moment okay so no we wouldn't be looking at pinching flowering tips unless okay so going back to, the, to, to unless you get them that are really really going like massively strong then you would be looking at maybe just sort of stopping them but what you need to do with the flowering if it's excessive flowering is have a massive amount of energy um, that are that, 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 that's there pumping through the tree so that late July um, you can come in uh, and cut back now the timing of that cutting back the easiest um, species to do this on is um, the white pines and particularly the Miyajima white pine which is um, the the ones which are grafted onto onto black rootstock uh, now they're very good at telling you when Uh, sorry, Dean. Um, 
they're, they're, they're very good. I'm going to stop looking at the, the chat. Um, they're, they're very good at telling you when they need to be cut back uh, and when all the growth is hard enough because once you get to that period in sort of late July, early August, what you tend to start to notice is uh, little orange paper sheaths that start to drop down uh, onto the onto the, the, the surface of your pot. Okay, at that point, all of the growth is hardened off. The needles have hardened off, and it's really going into that stage of okay, now it's time to start redistributing the energy. Okay, and that is the good time to, if you're going to cut back one of those Miyajima and white pines, to go in and, and do that. Okay. Other trees won't give you that obvious sign. Okay, but what you can look at, particularly with the the Sylvestris, if you remember back to, to to one of those illustrations, is you start to see the bud sort of really beginning to form, and you may see that happening as early as like June. Okay, the bud's beginning to, 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 to form at the end. Okay, so then it's just a judgment call about when you come in and cut back. Okay, so when you're doing all of this, try and imagine this is why we did the energy stream last time about thinking about energy within the system, what it's doing, and where we're pushing it. Okay, and so sometimes you'd be actively looking to waste energy, so you know, uh, cutting off the, the, the buds. Um, perhaps, or you know, cutting off that new growth perhaps a little bit later on in the season. Okay, so uh, or or earlier. You know, it depends on what what, what the situations are. There's there's so many different kind of like variables and and things that um, will affect it. So you really just just being able to read the tree and kind of um, understand what you're trying to do with it um, is, is 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 one of those key things. Okay, and so you can use all of these different kind of like tools different ideas to try and find the right path and the right method for for that tree that year okay so in a couple of years maybe this tree that we've been holding back and really kind of restricting it maybe it gets sick of being restricted maybe some of the weaker some of the branches on the on, on the weaker areas are starting to die off the roots are becoming a little bit perhaps too compacted and maybe we have to take a step back and so rather than being like super restrictive on this tree which we've been doing say for five six years Okay, it starts like, okay, now I'm sick of this. I need to grow. And so then maybe we need to, to, to approach it in a different way. Maybe allowing the candles to extend out a little bit longer. Okay, having more needles on the tree so it can generate a bit more energy. Um, and, you know, taking a slightly different approach. Different years will require different approaches. But these are the basic kind of fundamental ideas of what we do with the pine growth on single flush pines, depending on our kind of on our goals for the year. Okay, so think about your trees, um, and what am I going to, what am I trying to achieve with them this year, and how is sort of balancing that growth um, going to do things? And on quite often you will have two, two or three sort of different considerations in mind. So there'll always be kind of an aesthetic consideration, and then there'll always be a consideration of the health of the tree. And you've got to find that correct balance for the two of them. Okay, so that you're happy with the image, and the tree's happy with the amount of photosynthetic surface area, the amount of needles that it has in order to keep itself healthy and and, uh, and growing. Okay, so sometimes one of those considerations will be much higher. So, for example, with the the weaker trees, with the the, the trees that've been freshly repotted, we have very little aesthetic considerations, but we have a very high um, energy production um, consideration. So, very little candle pinching. And then other times we'll be looking at uh, the aesthetics more than more than the health of the tree. Okay, and we'll be looking at keeping it, you know, sort of pinching it back so that our candle extensions are a lot shorter. Okay, so sort of pinching, 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 pinching. Okay, and we'll be doing that for aesthetic reasons, perhaps a little bit more than um, the, more than the health of the tree. So it's always going to be that balance about trying to find the, the, the right sort of combination between the two. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, as we've sort of been talking about, this is mainly um, about um, single flush pines. Okay. So... Most people who are asking questions about Japanese black pines, Japanese red pines, um, I'm not really the man to ask because I've tried to forget all of my knowledge about Japanese black pines because I don't use them so much. Um, there are plenty of videos out there uh, and information that are applicable. You can use these ideas and concepts, okay, but slightly different tweaks to, um, uh, to. The process is depending on on the two okay as i said at the start of the stream in the uk where we have less sunlight etc we use you can use the, these techniques apply them to uh to, to, to single flush pines uh to double flush pines japanese black and red okay 
wherever you are in the in, in the world you've got to try and figure out the, the best way of doing it okay but these are these are basic concepts that will vary depending on species depending on how long your your, your growing season is depending on all of these different factors okay Bond, making a bonsai is like doing a jigsaw okay and you've just got to figure out how all these pieces fit together for your individual trees and things like that okay gone on a little bit longer than we were expected due to some technical difficulties and um some of the the, the, the chat that's going on there i hope everybody's questions got answered um <laughs> Uh, if you do have any questions and things like that, as I said, uh, there could we, we're looking at doing a Q and A session for uh, for the donors and people like that. Um, so please get in contact um, for, uh, for, for, for for sorting that one out. Um, as I said, these uh, streams are free, um, and we've been lucky enough to have quite a few um, donations come in. Uh, even as we were talking, uh, one just came in there. So thank you very much. And uh, where are we? Uh, if you wish to donate, um, there's a, I'm trying to find the, the, the thing here. Where's the chat gone? Ah, oh dear. Uh, then, yeah, there's a page. Uh, you can find it. I'll put the link up. Um, and, uh, you know, through through everybody's kind of uh, generosity, we'll, we'll sort of manage to continue doing this. Um, we will look at doing uh, another stream on Sunday something quite similar um so perhaps it could be a little bit shorter but this will be looking at things like um uh, beech hornbeam zelkova okay so those kind of like extending uh deciduous species and what we do with uh the the, the spring growth what's happening now how we go about it but essentially it's going to be a very similar process to what we're doing with the pines okay uh there's all of these things that we're looking at um are um there we go. I've just I've found the chat there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you do want to donate, there are things in the chat now. Um, so all of these techniques and stuff that we're looking at, um, the the concepts are the same, dependent on whatever species and, and and things you're working on. So this idea of energy balance, energy redistribution, how we go about it is different. Like, so with the extending deciduous species, we're thinking about you know the number of leaves that we have, cutting them back. With the with the, the the pines, the candles. What we're looking at is how long the candles get, because how long the candles get is going to determine how many needles form, which is then going to determine how much energy each branch can 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 generate. Okay, so the concepts will be very very similar, but just applied in different uh, ways depending on the species. Okay, so thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, if you missed any of it, it'll be up on the YouTube. Thank you very much to all those people who are just sending some money in now. Much appreciated. Um, and yeah, I shall hopefully see you on Sunday. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. I think there's a button and stuff. Um, uh, tell your mates uh, to keep tuning in if it's been useful. Um, and we'll keep making the videos. Um, and stay safe out there. Uh, don't get too drunk. Um, and just say that uh, this uh, this stream has been brought to you in association with uh, Fuller's 1845, uh, which is the last time England was any good at anything. <laughs> so happy St George's Day! Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, see you again soon, lads. Cheers and lasses. <laughs>